In this lesson, we'll talk about functions and function notation. Let's start with the vocabulary. The domain of a function or relation contains input values. The range of a function or relation contains output values. The input value, normally x, is the independent variable. The output Normally, y is called the dependent variable. And an important definition is function. A function is a mapping between two sets, wherein each input value is assigned exactly one output value. So let's apply the vocabulary to an example. Here we have two different representations of the same relation. On the left we see a mapping and on the right is a table of values. The domain of both of them contains the input values m, n, and negative 2. What about the range? Those are the values 8, 5, a, and b. This relation is not a function because there is an input value, namely negative 2, that has more than one output. So let's get more practice identifying functions and domain and range. We are asked which of the following represent functions. Identify the domain and range of each. Well, these, this is not instant. You really have to think about each case. The mapping on the left, every input value has exactly one output, so this one is a function. The table of values is not a function. You can see there's an input value, 5, that has more than one output. The graph of discrete points. This is a function if each x-coordinate has exactly one y-coordinate. For instance, starting with the point negative 2, comma 3. Is there another point on that graph with an x-coordinate of negative 2? No. Then move on to the next point, negative 1, comma, negative 2. There is no other point graphed with an x-coordinate of negative 1. Therefore, this one, if you go through all the points, you'd agree this one is a function. Once again, the table is not a function. And the graph on the far right, the continuous curve, is also not a function. I've shown an example of an x-coordinate, negative 2, which has more than one y-coordinate. So what is the domain and range of each? The domain is the input values, the range is your output. Notice on the table for your domain, we, put the, we like to put the numbers in order from least to greatest, and we don't repeat the values in the set notation. Now, the domain of the set of discrete points are all of your x-coordinates. Your range are your y-coordinates. And the domain is your x-values that are allowed in your continuous curve. It's all x's from negative 3 to 0. Your range is the y values that are allowed. So we're going from 1 to 3. Now with graphs, there is a really nice test that's used to determine if a graph represents a function. It's called the vertical line test. And what we want to do is we want to imagine drawing a vertical line through each point, basically, in the graph that we see. And if the vertical line hits only one point of the graph, then it passes the vertical line test, and it's a function. So let's take these case by case. The very first case, I just drew a vertical line. Notice that vertical line intersected one point. Let's draw another vertical line. It intersected one point. And if I continue doing this, there would not be a vertical line that intersects more than one point. Therefore, this is a function. It passed the vertical line test. 
Now let's look at the circle. Instantly I see a place, a vertical line, which intersected the circle in more than one point. Therefore this failed the vertical line test. This is not a function. And even though it failed it in more than one place, all you really need is one counterexample. But right here we'll show you two vertical lines that intersect the curve in more than one point. Therefore, this is not a function. It failed the vertical line test. Now take a look at the next example. Can you imagine a vertical line that can go through there that will in intersect that curve in more than one point? There's lots of places. I'm drawing just one. So this one failed the vertical line test. It is not a function. And finally, this last curve, everywhere I draw a line, it's only going to intersect the curve in one point. This one passed, and this one is a function. So then the next um, thing we want to talk about is when we have a function, we like to use something called function notation. And a lot of students kind of get a little bit bogged down by the function notation. And we want to share rationale as to why we use it. So if you consider this the linear function y equals x plus 2 and y equals x minus 5. Now these are equations of lines. And I said to you, find the y value of the function at an x value of 0. You might say, well, find the y value of which function? Are you talking about the first function or the second function? So the reason we use function notation is because it clarifies it. We'll call the first function f of x, it's a function of x, equals x plus 2. And the second function we'll call g, g of x equals x minus 5. And this time, instead of saying find the y value of the function, at an x value of 0, we'll say evaluate f of 0. That means I'm looking at the first function. I'm substituting x for 0. f of 0 equals 0 plus 2. Therefore, f of 0 equals 2. In other words, that function passes through the point 0, 2. What if I said evaluate g of 2? Now I'm substituting the 2 in place of the x into the g function. g of 2 equals 2 minus 5. g of 2 equals negative 3. Do one more example. If h of x equals 4x minus 3 and p of x equals x squared minus 3x, find p of negative 3. So you are going to substitute negative 3 into which function? the p function, right? The second one that was given. So p of negative 3 equals negative 3 squared minus 3 times negative 3. Now we're going to apply order of operations and simplify. p of negative 3 equals 9 plus 9. p of negative 3 equals 18. Again, graphically what this means, because we've done some algebra here, but what does it mean graphically? It means negative 3, 18 lies on the curve that's called p of x. So we'll get more practice with that. We're just getting the feel for using function notation. So let's evaluate some functions. And let's evaluate functions using a graphical approach and an algebraic approach. We'll start with the graphical approach. Consider the graph of the quadratic function f of x. We're asked to evaluate f of negative 2. Now that means find the value of the function at an x value of negative 2. So please look at your x-axis, go over to negative 2, and go up what is the corresponding y value. That's what we're asking you to do here. So the answer to the question is f of negative 2 equals 4. And to further see that, if we made a table of values for f of x equals x squared, 
and I said find f of negative 2, you can see the corresponding y value is 4 in the table as well. So now let's move on to an algebraic case. Consider the equation now of a linear function g of x, where g of x is given as 2x. We're asked to evaluate g of 1. So we're going to start with that equation. We're going to substitute 1 in place of x, and g of 1 equals 2. Now again, it's important that you understand this has a graphical picture that goes with it. So the graph of the function y equals 2x looks like that green line. And you'll notice that at an x value of 1, it has a corresponding y value of 2. So that's what we mean by evaluating functions. Now finally, there will be an example of a function given in a context form or, or a story problem. So here's one. A company charges 25 cents per minute for a cell phone call. This can be expressed as the ordered pair 1, 0 0.25. In other words, for one minute it costs 25 cents. Find the cost of a two-minute, three-minute, and four-minute call. Express your answers as ordered pairs in set notation. And then identify the domain and range. Determine if the set of ordered pairs represents a function. Okay, so here are ordered pairs. The first one was given. Now for two minutes it would cost 50 cents. Three minutes would be 75 cents. Four minutes, a dollar. To take that list of ordered pairs and write it in set notation just means write it from left to right and include braces around the ordered pairs. And does this represent a function? Well, is each input value assigned exactly one output? Yeah, in this context, every input will have a different output. Therefore, it is a function. So thank you for your attention on this video functions and function notation.